So hi guys, Craig Beals here again to help you understand the structure of an atom. This is an incredibly important topic if you're going to start to understand science on a deeper level. So um, if a, a reminder, just in case you need it, an atom is the smallest matter that has the properties of a chemical element. This is my little example atom that we're going to use down here on the bottom. So the structure of the atom, atom's got three parts. Um, it's made up of three things. It's made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. The protons are positively charged and they live in the nucleus, in the center. The neutrons have no charge, but they have mass, just like the protons, but no charge. They live in the nucleus as well. The electrons have a negative charge and they're spinning around the outside of the atom. An element is a substance consisting of atoms having the same number of protons in their nuclei. So look at this pencil here. It's got graphite in the middle. All right, we call it pencil lead, but it's really graphite. Graphite is made up of carbon atoms, all right? Arranged together, those carbon atoms all have the same number of protons in their nuclei. That's why they are carbon, because they have the same number of protons, and they have six. Now there's lots of elements, 114 of them that scientists have found or made, and 98 of them are naturally occurring. That 98 number is always changing. Actually, the 114 is as well, as chemists and physicists start to develop um, or make new elements inside the lab. And then astronomers and other geologists and other scientists are finding them out in the universe. So we have lots of naturally occurring ones. That number again is always changing. If you wanna keep up to date on it, follow the iupac.org down there at the bottom. So let's look at the periodic table. The one I'm using here is from Wikipedia. It's under Creative Commons license. It's a fantastic periodic table. I would encourage you to check it out. You can print it off and you can use it. Now, if we go back to the carbon or the graphite that's inside this pencil, to find carbon on this periodic table, we need to find number six. Carbon has six protons, which is why it's number six on the periodic table. So how do I read the periodic table? Well, I pulled carbon off of here so we can see it a little better. The atomic number, number six for carbon, is the number of protons in the nucleus. Okay, carbon anywhere you find it is gonna have six protons. That's how it got its name. Anything with six protons has to be carbon. The uh, mass number, also called the atomic mass, depending on the periodic table that you're using, is the mass of the protons plus the mass of the neutrons inside the nucleus. The great thing is a proton has a mass of one atomic mass unit, and a neutron has a mass of one atomic mass unit. They're called am nu. So they're really easy. All you have to do is count them up in the nucleus, and you know the mass. Now electrons have very, very little mass, so we don't include them in the mass number, um, I'll give you that number and the mass of an electron in a, in a later video. For now, we're just going to pretend that they're so small that we're not going to be concerned about the mass. So um, for our carbon example here, the atomic number is 6, the elemental symbol is C, the name is carbon, and let me go back here. This is really important. Down there at the bottom, it says the mass is 12.0107. Now, if a proton has a mass of 1 and a neutron has a mass of 1, how do we get to that 0 0.0107. I'm going to show you in just a minute, but for now let's just focus on that 12 at the beginning. Okay, uh, it's coming up. There's another way to write this. That way is going to be really important if you decide to continue on. The next series of uh, videos and lectures I have is about radioactive decay and radiation, and being able to write it this way is really important. The 12 at the top tells us the mass of the nucleus. The 6 down below tells us the number of protons or the charge in the inside of the nucleus. A few more key terms that you really need to know. One is ions, okay? Atoms of the same element always have the same number of protons. The carbon inside this graphite always has six protons. But the number of electrons spinning around every one of those carbons inside of there may not be the same. If they're not the same, those are called ions, okay? So I'll have a positive ion if I don't have enough electrons, negative things spinning around the outside of my nucleus. And I'll have an anion if I have more electrons and protons. Now in my class, this is something that you have to memorize. You have to know the difference between a cation and an anion because bonding elements, many of them bond because of what ions they turn into. So it's a really important concept. I remember anion as a negative ion, a negative ion, and then everything else falls into place. So let's talk about an ion. Okay, I've got three examples of, a, of an element up here. The, the first one, we can count up the protons. Those are gonna be the blue things in the middle. One, two, three, four, five. It's got six protons. 
And then I count up the electrons that are around the outside edge, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's got six of those. So um, protons have a positive charge, electrons have a negative charge. What's my overall charge? I don't have an overall charge on this one. So that's just regular old carbon 12, normal carbon. Let's look at the next one. Again, I count them up. It's got six protons in the middle. They have a positive charge. And then I see it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. So eight negative parts. Well, that means I have an overall negative two charge. Hmm. So this is actually an ion of carbon that's negatively charged. Now I'm just using these in examples. So if you're a if you're a chemist physicist, you know that there's a little more to this, but let's not go there quite yet. We will down the road. I count up the next one. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six protons, and I've got one, two, three, four, five negative parts, which means I have an overall plus one or one plus, as we would write it later on, a one plus charge. This is a cation. And this is an anion because of the negative charge. So let's talk about isotopes. We're going to sort of switch gears and take that concept of ions. We're going to save that for a little later on. It's really important. But I want to focus back in on the nucleus. And when we focus in on the nucleus, we need to talk about isotopes. Now remember, carbon always has six protons inside of its nucleus. But the number of neutrons in that nucleus might vary. And if it varies, it's still carbon. We just call it an isotope of carbon. So there's the definition of an isotope. If you need to, write it down. I'm going to give you an example here on the next slide. Now let's count these up. The last one, we focused on the electrons on the outside because we were dealing with ions. Isotopes, we have to deal with the nucleus. So again, I count up the protons in here. There are six protons. The neutrons are going to be these yellow orangey things over here. There are six of them. All right, so I add those together to get the mass of the nucleus. This has got a mass of 12. This is carbon 12. That's how we write it. We count up the next one over here. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six protons in it. And it's got one, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, it's got seven neutrons in there. So this is 13. I'm going to write carbon 13 here. And then I'm going to go to the next one, the, the isotope of carbon that we're really going to focus in on in the next couple of lectures. Again, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six protons. It has to because it's carbon. And this one's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight neutrons. That gives it a mass of 14. That means this is carbon 14. This is a radioactive isotope of carbon, okay, because it's got a mass of 14. So again, isotopes are going to be really, really important in understanding all of the concepts of chemistry as we go down the road. And it takes us to answer this question. Why is the mass of carbon on the periodic table 12.0107? Well, that's because generally speaking, what we find in nature are these carbons. And when you count them up, they've got six protons and six neutrons, which means the mass of these carbons is carbon 12 just like we looked at before. Okay, that's the most common type. But every once in a while, in nature, we find one of these that we looked at before. This is carbon-14. So the way the chemists decided to set up the periodic table was to get an average of all of the different types of carbon. Or, if you're looking at uranium, all the different types of uranium. Now, if carbon-12 is the most common type, and every once in a while we find a carbon-14, that's why the number isn't 12. If every carbon that existed had a mass of 12, that number would be exactly 12 on the periodic table. But it's not. It's a little higher than 12, which means every once in a while we must find a carbon that has a little bit higher mass than 12, and that's carbon-14. So that's why this number is shifted, um, and it's not perfectly 12. When you look at the periodic table, just about every single element on the periodic table does not have a nice whole number. That's because just about every element has isotopes. Some of them haven't been studied clearly enough to know what those isotopes are. So that's the basics. Going back to the basics of the structure of an atom, where can we take the isotopes next? Well, the reason we learn about that is that leads into radioactivity and radioactive decay. That's the energy that shoots out of a nucleus when we have an isotope. Later on, we'll come all the way back to ions. But Let's go to radioactivity next, and uh, you know what? Have fun, enjoy it, keep on learning. 
See, so once you get radioactivity down, boy, you can really start to run with stuff. So why is it important to understand radioactivity? That's actually where we're headed next. But you've got it all over inside of your house. Important thing to learn about, and in the next video, I'm going to explain to you radiation.